the roots are intertwined with, with other wheat in that field. And when you pull that wheat up, it's going to pull out that good person. So that's why you'll see in the church at times, you'll see people that are kind of um, trouble. And they're poison. And you can't really hang out with them. You can't live. You, you can't successfully live for God, whether they're relatives or not. You can't successfully live for God if they are around you. But they're family, so you've got to put up with them. Now, because you are interrelated to them, as a pastor, I don't want you to be destroyed, so I'll put up with that. So you're saved. But you, got, you can't put up with it. Because if you let it be part of your life, it'll poison you. There was a, a vineyard that was planted in, uh, I think it was California. Anyways, it was perfect land, perfect soil, perfect everything. They planted the vineyards. It takes a long time to get the vineyards up to bearing fruit. It was producing fruit. Now they say this should make the best wine in the country. They, got, they started to uh, uh, make, you know, produce the wine, and they drank the first sample of it. And it, was, it was disgusting. It was bitter. And they said, Why? This is, we have the best crop, we have the best grain, our best seed that we planted, the best uh, grapes, uh, the best we could afford, uh, soil's good, what's going on? They looked through it and they found a, a toxic weed that had blended the root systems with that root system of those vineyard, that vineyard, and that produced, that, that these roots sucked in some of that bitter plant and it went into the root into the grape and then when they made that wine it produced a bitter wine so you got to be careful what you allow in your dirt in your soil in your body and who you are it's your soul it's your treasure you can produce your treasure amen based on the soil on the soil type the soil type again is the field the soil type uh, is now now notice this it was the good soil that produced good ground right uh, good soil that produced 30 to 60 to 100 fold right is that right what's good soil good soil is cultivated land right this is a place where the ground is broke up and there's a seed bed ready to receive the word of God right so where's that that's the church this is where you get beat up Hello? This is where you get smashed because this is where we get bust the clods that are in your life and bust out the hard, fallow ground and get you to respond and get you to come to the altar and pour it out and get your soil right and get the junk out of your life and get the weeds out of your life and get the stuff out of your life. This is very important because, and, 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 and notice that when you plant, when, they, when a farmer will plant a field, you'll notice it's in rows, right? Notice the fields are in rows? You ever notice a church are in rows? Pews are in rows? Because this is where the soil is. The Word of God is put into the soil, all right? The Word of God is put into your life. You're disciplining yourself to come to get beat up. To get the ground ready to receive the word of God. Get the junk out of your life. Pull the weeds out and break the clumps up and get so that the word of God can come into your life. Amen? That's why Bible studies are so effective because when you go into their homes and you start to break up the soil and you start to, so that they're able to receive the word of God. You know, I'll go into homes and I'll start teaching a Bible study and uh, they'll have a television, just a huge television blaring and, and I'm, I don't say a word about it. I just keep teaching. After a while, the clumps are being broke and they say, uh, maybe we should just move this out of the, we'll go into the living room. Or should we just shut this off? Why? Because they're starting to break the clumps. They're starting to want to hear the Word of God. This, is, this worldly stuff is distracting us from receiving the Word. And so they're starting to get the stuff out of their life. Amen. And as you see, this progress in a Bible study as I'm breaking up the ground. They don't even know I'm breaking up the ground. 
Amen? This is what's producing. This is a good field. Say good field. Now, so what we're seeing here, now we're going back to our text. Now we see this field, no doubt this man went to a lot of fields, a lot of churches, and didn't find the treasure. But when he found that church, that field, with the rose, he found the treasure. What do you think the treasure is? The Word of God is Jesus Christ. But the bottom line is this, to be able to have Jesus, have the truth, you've got to buy the field. Some of us want God, but we don't want the field. We don't want the church. But to have God, to have the treasure, you've got to have the field. Does this make sense to anybody? So you can kind of see when Jesus is talking, there's a whole lot of angles you can look at this to understand where we're at where, and what we need to do. Now, this church is going to be good because you make it good. You're the soil. This church can be average. You're the soil. This church can be excellent. You're the soil. This church can be whatever you want it to be. You're the contributor to it. You're the one that makes a difference to it. Amen. There could be good soil, really good soil, producing 30, 60, 100 fold, and there could be other soil that's producing 20, 10. And some people, some some of the fields are are full of tares, are not tares, you know, tares too, and 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 weeds and thistles, and and you compete, and you never can, you never develop fruit. You're always struggling against living on the fence. You're always struggling, trying to live for God. You never really have that victory because you live on the fence. You want the world, but you want God. You're going between the two, struggling, and you're not really happy because you want both worlds. But it's your soil. It's your choice. You can get the tares out. You can get the wheat. You, when the preaching hits the rocks, you can get the rocks out. Every soil, every soil type could have been the best type. But the, the soil that made 30 to 60 to 100 fold, that soil subjected itself to being cultivated and prepared to receive the, receive the Word of God. That soil disciplined itself. I'm going to go under the blade of the plow. I am going to get smashed up by the heralds of the Word of God. I'm going to get slammed. I'm going to get convicted. I'm going to, I don't, I won't like what the preacher's saying. I, 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 I will, I, I'll, I'll almost want to leave sometimes. I don't like it. But I got to discipline myself because I got to get the treasure. Amen? Amen? Let's give them some praise. Praise the Lord. Amen. It's, it's no doubt God is preparing us, ready or not, here he comes. God's preparing us for the greatest revival this area has ever seen. It's no doubt about it, what's, going, what's happening. Amen. It's up to us to make this the best place possible. Nobody can do it for you. You have to do it for your church. You have to do it for your brothers and sisters. You've got to live for God. You've got to get the world out of your life. You've got to get the tares out of your life. Come on, you've got to get those th your root system that not connected to somebody that's poison. Had somebody contact me recently and saying that they they um, apologize for the um, they were turning against us and so forth, so on. And I said, I never knew what the issue was. I never knew what the issue was. And they said, well, I talked to so-and-so. I said, oh, that was, you don't even have to tell me anymore. Because that person is so bitter and they're so full of poison. You don't have to tell me nothing. I'm not even going to add anything to it. I accept your apology. No problem. Don't worry about it. You're living for God. That's the greatest thing I can hear. But if you're going to live for God, you've got to get away, away from the poison. 
people that are bitter. There's people, you, I, no doubt, some of you know who I'm talking about. There's people out there that are bitter maybe towards whatever happened, maybe in this church. You want to, if you don't, you don't want to be saved, just hang around with them. It'll poison you. It'll destroy you. Amen. Now, if you're looking for a perfect church, you're not going to find it because you're working with imperfection. We're dealing with a perfect God and a perfect word of God. But we're dealing with humanity who is not perfect. But we can be perfect through the word of God. Perfection is being the best you can be. That's what perfection in the word of God means. Best you can be. Don't tell me you're the best you can be and you're still carnal. You're not the best you can be. You have the, you have the potential to be whatever you want to be. But don't put it off on, it's just me. Come on, folks. Amen? Because the Word of God is going to be the thing producing, not you. I can't produce this. God can. If I submit myself, He'll do it through me. Amen? Amen. Let's give him some praise. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, what, don't you want to be a, a showcase for this people that are coming to this church? Don't you want to be a showcase? Don't you want to be a Christian? Don't you want to be, hey, uh, man, that's a good church. These are, these are good people. They care about people. They live for God. Amen? Amen. So turn to your neighbor and say, um, you're just a bag of dirt. <laughs> just joking. I'm <laughs> just joking. Amen. Amen. <laughs> wow. <laughs> is, that, is, is that what we've been preaching about? <laughs> Amen. If it's your wife, apologize. No, but anyways. No, it's just joking. <laughs> or your husband. But anyways, do you know, so, but the bottom line is, is that we're but dirt. We're but dirt. But you know what? Something God makes the difference in this. Man, this could be some of the best dirt around. Amen. Praise God. You know, Graham, I got some dirt on you, but that's a good dirt. It's got some good dirt. <laughs> Amen. So the man who, uh, so um, where are we at? Uh, so the man who finds the treasure in the field, no doubt, tried again many fields, but he found the treasure in the church, and he had to buy that field. Again, we may not like the people in this church. It's like weird. Think about it. When you first came, you were like, "These people are weird." You thought, well, one more weird person won't hurt. I'll join. No, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. Amen. Amen. I won't even be noticed. No, just joking. But anyways, <laughs> just joking. Amen. But, um, but you buy the field. It's a package deal. Come on. That means when you buy the field, that means you have to forgive. You have to get along. You have to have a fruit of the Spirit. You have to have long-suffering. You have to have gentleness. But how do you think long-suffering is made? By suffering long. <laughs> Amen. you got to get patient with people. you got to get the fruit of the Spirit. Because you got to buy the field. Because the treasure's worth it. The treasure's worth it. Come on, the treasure is worth it. This Jesus is worth it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. What would, could you do? With, what, again, what could you do with the preacher? Well, I mean, tre treasure. What could you do with the treasure? What can we do with the treasure? <laughs> All right. Now, uh, some of that laughter I don't mind, but some of you, the way you laughed. No, it's joking. <laughs> Amen. But long suffering. No. But anyways. Amen. A preacher bringeth forth out of his treasure um, these things. Amen. Uh, let's go to. Oh man, did I not write that down? Maybe not wrote it down. Um, uh, 
Uh, see where's that at? I did not write it down. I, I looked it up too. Um, look up um, good and good and bad. Uh, Good and new, new and good. Uh, scribe. Look up scribe, new and good. Got to Amen. Sorry. It, a scribe, and I think it's in. Is it in Luke? No. It might be in Matthew. Oh, yes. That's it. Matthew thirteen fifty two. Um, somebody throw me a pen. A pen. All right. Thank you, Jesus. Thirteen fifty two. Read it, somebody. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, sorry, sis. Okay, notice, notice it says, go read that again. <laughs> every scribe, say scribe. Okay. He's instructed in the kingdom of heaven. A householder. He's a, he's a, so he's a scribe. He's a householder. He's a preacher. So he's a householder. He's responsible for those in his household. It's his God's house. He's a scribe. He's a learner. He studies. And he gets treasures. Say treasures. What does it say? What type of treasures? Things. Things new and old. So, okay. So the treasure is the word of God. As we're presenting the Word of God, we are seeing Jesus. Come on. You are seeing Jesus Christ. He is the treasure. The Word of God, the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. The more you preach the Word, the more you see Jesus. The more you see who He is. You reveal, you reveal how His ways, the way He does things. Uh, does this make sense to anybody? So, so this treasure that we're finding in the field, amen, is actually the Word of God and this householder. I mean, and, and you can go different angles with it, but you're going to understand that you're gaining every time you come to church, you're getting another treasure. You're getting treasures, amen, new and old. So there's things that I might relate. Uh, uh, some of you might have heard, um, heard the message I preached about um, but I related to the story about I have something better for you about the, the d disappointment while I was hunting. And God said, I have something better for you and the trophy I got. But, but the thing is, is that God used it as a life message as, as to tell, share to, with people when they have disappointments that living for God and, and you have a disappointment. And God says, listen, I have something better for you. Listen, you might have this fallback, and you might have this thing, but you can live for me. I got something better for you. Amen. C come on. We're looking. You know, you know why you're disappointed? Because you have a lot of faith. Come on. You had a lot of faith, and you thought you were going to receive it right then, and you know God promised it to you, but you didn't get it right then. Amen. But, all the, but now you're disappointed. Now you don't think it's going to happen. The devil's speaking to you, but you remember God spoke it. Amen. And you realize that God has something better, and this is just a little setback, and you're just thanking God for it. Come on. Let's give him praise. <clears throat> Amen. So... I can relate to past experience. I can relate to new things that I'm getting. Amen. And each one of these times is treasured. And, that, and not only me, but the Bible says that when you come together, some has a psalm, some has a song, somebody, everybody has something to contribute. When you come to the house of God, you don't just sit there and say, receive, 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 because you become a dead seed. 
The Dead Sea has water going in, but no water going out. It becomes dead. It becomes lifeless. You have to have a, if you want to be alive, you have to have an inlet, and then you have to have an outlet. The reason some of us aren't living right, amen, we ain't overcoming because we're not giving out. We're receiving, but we're not giving out. We need to always give out. God's given to you. You need to give out. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. If you want to live, you got to give. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Just keep, you can't just keep receiving. That's the reason why people are, are struggling surviving, living for God. Because they just think that if they come to church and don't do, and, and don't do anything else, amen, then they're not going then, then they're gonna somehow live for God. You can't live for God that way. You have to continue to if you've received, you gotta give. Freely have you received, freely give. Man, if you witness to everybody and tell them about how good God is and talking about living for God and so forth and so on, when you start to backslide, even the people around you say, hey. Because, <laughs> I mean, some of you have told me they've done it. I'm just not used to you doing that. Did the preacher talk to you? Why can't I just get carnal for a little bit? No, just joking. But anyway, you see what I'm saying? And I, 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 so let's let's put ourselves out there, Amen, and live for God. So let's go look at this uh, Proverbs twenty three twenty three. Buy the truth and sell it not. So basically, there's got to be a time in your life, Amen, where you bought this treasure. You examined it and you looked at it. You looked at this word, you looked at this covenant that you made with Jesus Christ, and you examined it every angle and said, this is my life before, this is my life now, this is my life, what it could be, amen. Where do I want to go? Do I want to go back there? Do I want to go this way? I'm right here. i got to make a decision. I either buy it or I let somebody else buy it. Or I only buy what piece I want. Well, I have to buy the whole package in the name of Jesus. Listen, the bottom line, your success is up to you. The Word of God is already successful. If you allow your soil to receive the Word of God and you prepared yourself and disciplined yourself to receive the Word of God, you can be whatever you want to be. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Do you know what? Something... God doesn't steal your personality, take your personality away. He just makes it better with his word. Amen? Praise the Lord. Amen? John chapter 5 and verse 39, Jesus said, Search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. You've got to search for it. You've got to look for it. Amen. It's, you, you, you can't just sit, come to church and say, well, whatever the preacher says, that's what I'm going to do. No, you've got to search it out and make sure what he, I'm preaching is right. And when something is not preached that's right, something goes against your spirit. You're, you know because you condition yourself because you bought the truth. And you examined the truth. And you looked it over. Now somebody's up here and they're preaching about the truth. And there's a little bit of, uh, what do you call it, reprobate silver. It's, it's a type of silver that, that when you try it in the fire, it paint turns black. It's reprobate. It's got some other stuff in it. It's not the real thing. And so there's preaching about the truth, and you already bought the truth, and you already got it established in your life, and they're preaching about it, and something just rubs you wrong. Everything seems just right, but there's something wrong. Because you really searched it out before you made the purchase. And there's something that's rubbing your spirit wrong. Amen? Well, they might be singing to the glory of God, but their spirit does not believe this truth. They might be singing words that are very... Uh, Christian-like, but their spirit is something else. Amen. And it grates your spirit. I remember years ago, my, my pastor uh, uh, 
you know, they had a, 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 a big youth group. I can't remember. It might have even been 100 voice, but I can't remember if it was that big. But he had a big youth group, amen, that would go uh, tour the country and sing all over the country. And, um, and Brother Kilgore called the, all the young people in and he said, listen, we're canceling the tour because some of you young ladies are trimming your hair. And he goes, uh, and, and I, I was sitting there listening to this and so forth and so on. And then I got to thinking, then the Holy Ghost uh, spoke to me. I said, "What, God, why are they trimming their hair? And God spoke to me. He said, go ask what music they're listening to. Go to the young people. So I did. I said, hey, what, what, do you, what kind of music are you listen to? And that day it was Sandy Patty. And she was a Christian artist, but she had her hair really short. And God said, God spoke to me. He said, it's the spirit of her rebellion that's bleeding through the music and getting on these young people. The music's good. The music inspire, it's inspirational. But that spirit was rubbing through, going through that music and caused them to feel like they need to trim their hair. So the bottom line is, is that I want to I want to keep my gospel pure. I want to keep it pure. I don't I don't listen to I don't listen to uh, people that Trinitarian preachers and stuff like. I don't listen to them. I don't I don't read their books. Come on, I don't want to see uh, Jesus through the eyes of a Trinitarian. I want to see Jesus through the Word of God. I don't want it reprobate in any way. I don't want me to sit there and, you know, one word for, uh, for uh, sin is to miss the mark. It means that you, you're aiming for the target and you're shooting for the target, but you, um, you go to the right, to the left, or down, or, or up, and you have to adjust it until there's nothing wrong with missing the mark. The problem is if you consistently miss the mark. And you have to adjust to it, and you have to redial up your scope until you get it bullseye, bullseye, bullseye. Okay, so that's how it is. And, and when you get around people that are twisting the Scripture a little bit, and you just kind of let, you could twist it a little bit, twist it a little bit, twist it a little bit until you're so, you keep, you keep shooting and shooting. And, but the further you get back, the further it's going to go further it's going to go until you can't even hit the bull, you can't even hit the target so you have to continue to readjust your spiritual walk come on folks you can't sit there i got it today and you have it for the rest of your life you got to continue to adjust it any any hunter will know that you might have to sight your gun and you sight it in the beginning of the season because you don't know uh, you might have st stumbled or you might have got some moisture on it and just warped the wood just a little bit, whatever. It just or it fell over and you didn't know about it. You might check it out. Make sure before hunting season. You do that every year. But you do it. You also do it in your spiritual walk. You have to every once in a while readjust, readjust. Am I hitting bullseye still? Am I still on? Amen? Come on, it's all right. When people sit there and, and kind of, uh, listen, you know, uh, you're just not like you used to be. Come on, you go back to, go back to, the, to the target practicing and say, hey, listen, they, you know, you got a little temper. Or what, you, got, you know, come on, we got to readjust ourselves, amen, to get, the, to get it right. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Um, Luke chapter 6 and verse 46, amen. Luke chapter 6 and verse 46, amen. I'm talking about treasures, treasures, treasures. Say treasures. Find that treasure. Access that treasure. Look at those treasures. Look at the things in the Word of God, amen. Praise God, amen. Let's go Luke chapter 6, 46, somebody read. Now that's very that's a profound statement. 
Why do you call me Lord, Lord? What Lord means master. How many people call God master or Lord and they just do their own thing? He's my Lord. As they're drinking and smoking, doing dope. Come on, somebody. He's, your, he's my Lord. He's not your Lord. You don't do what he says. He's not your Lord. He said, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not what I say? Amen. Next verse. Whosoever. Say whosoever. whosoever. That means anybody. Whosoever. Anybody. Say anybody. anybody. It could be me. If I come to him, what, what's required to come to God? What is required to come to Jesus? Next word. Read. And here are these sayings. Now, now, there's one thing about hearing this saying, but what's he say? And doeth them. Come on, there's a lot of hearers. There's, there's not a lot of doers. That's the key. Do what you hear. Search the scripture. You listen. You listen. I've got to make sure I bought this correctly. I've got to make sure it's solid in my life. Come on, I searched the scriptures to see if these things were true. Amen. Come on, this is the greatest treasure of all. It ends in eternal life. I can have all kinds of things I have in this life, treasures from God in this life. Amen. But not only here, but the greatest treasures when I get there. But to get there, I've got to do I got to maintain the treasure here. Read. Okay. He built the house. He say digged. Say he digged. Come on, it's work. Listen, I'm going to build this house. And Brother Rand, I know storms will come. Because that's part of life. Storms will come. If, I, if you live any length of time, you're going to look at life around you and you're going to see people that went through storms. I'm going to eventually go through a storm and you're eventually going to go through a storm. Amen. But So I'm going to have to prepare for that storm. And when I build this house, i got to lay the foundation. I've got to dig it deep. i got to dig. Come on, everybody, let's go do this. Let's go do this. What? Not, not now. I, I, I'm doing a big work right now. I've got to get this foundation right. i got to make sure this is right. Come on, you know what I mean. When you first got the Holy Ghost, you couldn't put the Bible down. You just kept reading it. You, you, you may not even have been a reader, but you just couldn't put the Bible down. You just, just, I, I just can't put it down. And, and then when you get so tired, you go to sleep with the Bible on your chest, thinking maybe it would absorb into you and, and, while you're sleeping. <laughs> because you just, you know, enough time. I would study until I would get a headache. And then I would pray to get rid of the headache so I could go back to studying. And I just keep doing it. Keep searching. Keep digging. Keep digging down. In all the years that I've lived for God, I have not changed my message. Almost 40 years in January, I, I, have, I dug it then. I haven't changed. I, did, I took the time to go to the rock. What was the rock? He's, here's, here, here's, here, his saying and doing it. If he said it, I'm going to do it. I had to make sure I went to the rock. Jesus Christ, I got a hold of you, God. I'm making covenant with you in baptism. I'm going to do everything you say. I'll slip up, but I'm going to readjust because I got it on the foundation. And how do you know that you got it on the foundation? 
is if you have a little storm that comes into your life and there's a crack in the wall. There's a crack in the wall because it's a faulty foundation. Oh, the building up here might look good. But it's not because the building up here might look good, but you can't know until you got in the house and then you see the cracks. Because it wasn't on the foundation. And we can make it look good on the outside. And we can tell people how good we are. But listen, you know those cracks. And you know those problems. And you know those issues in your life. You better dig down. Come on, we had our the floor coming up here, uh, cracking up in there. And, and I mean... I mean, because the ground is kind of one of those situations. And so they had to drill holes in that concrete out there and, dr and pump cement underneath that to pull up that, the, the, that slab because they had to go back to the foundation. And the same with your life. Listen, you might have got your house built, but you haven't been listening to God. You haven't been obeying God. You haven't got down to the rock. You might need to go back to the rock. Say, God, I'm displeasing you. God, I'm not what I could be. God, I have a lot more potential than what I'm doing. Now, this is good stuff anyway. I'm talking about treasure. I'm talking about a treasure that's worth it. I'm talking about a treasure that's worth everything, every energy and how, how much you bought it for and how much it cost you and what you lost to get it. Amen. It was, you, he sold everything he had. Everything in this world was not even comparable to Jesus. Come on. You've got to realize that what you didn't sell out for Jesus will cause the crack in the wall. Thank God for the crack in the wall, Josh. Because that crack in the wall is telling me that I need some work and I need to dig, start digging again. And I need to put it down right and I'm going to put it down and I'll get, what am I not listening to and why is there a fault in my, why is there a fault in my Christianity and why, amen, and, and so I'm going to do, I'm going to dig it down and, and you go ahead and you play your games but right now I've got to do some digging. And I'm going to do some digging and, and it don't matter because I, you know, Come on, folks. Come on, just a little worldliness over here and a little bit over here and a little. Come on, come on, come on, come on. We, we can be better. We can be better. Come on, we can be better for Jesus. I want to glorify God. Does anybody want to glorify God? Does anybody want to make God look good? Does anybody want to say, God, you did so much for me. I want to please you. I want to please you. I want to please you. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. And, and read. Say when. when. Say when. when. It's going to happen. Say when. when. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. The greatest storm of all is death. I don't want to want, want people to walk by and say, look at, man, he really looked like a Christian. Look at the destruction. Whoa, what a house, what a out, what a Christian, what oh. But what a disaster. Revelation says they will wonder if their name was written in the book of life. The scripture says, come out from among her, be ye separate, saith the Lord. That's, false, that's a false church. That ye be not partakers of her deeds, of her sin. What? God said, I want you to be separate. I don't want you to be part of this prostitute church. You say, what are you talking about? I'll tell you what I'm talking about. Some of these preachers talk about they won't, they won't preach for less than $30,000 for one service. You know why? They're prostituting the gospel. 
God's people are not hirelings. God, I mean, I could have made a lot more money going other places, but I'm going to do God's will. And God's going to take care of my bills. And God's going to take care. I'll start home missions work. I'll do whatever he tells me to do. I'll preach at places that can't afford to have me preach. Whatever. It doesn't matter to me because he's the one that's paying the bills. Amen. I'm not a hireling. Come on. I'm not a hireling. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Amen. Because if you'll do it for money, amen, come on, if you'll do it, amen, you got wrong motives. But just like that, that prostitute in Revelations, mother of harlots, what do you think she got all that for? Prostituting herself. Prostituting a gospel that was not a gospel. You found that field. May not like, be the church you like. Oh, they got better buildings over at other places. They got this and they got that. But let me tell you something. Is that where the treasure is? If the treasure ain't in those bigger buildings and the treasures aren't in those talent and the treasure's not in that, then you better find out where the treasure is. And if it's an old warehouse, that's where you need to go. Amen. That's where the treasure is. That's where God. <laughs> Praise God in the name of Jesus Christ. I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel like some of us, amen, need to wake up. Amen, you're asleep. You need to get rid of the junk in your life. You need to do it tonight. You need to do it right now. You need to get stuff, start kicking stuff out of your house. Come on, you want to live for God? Stop playing games, praise God. In and out, in and out, going back and forth. Come on, in the name of Jesus Christ. You know what to do. You're doing so good. You do so well. And then you, then there it is again, pulling you out. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Amen. But he's not a treasure to you. He's not a treasure to you. I got to be saved. Say, I must be saved. I must be saved. I got to be saved. I'm, you've got to be saved. I must be saved. Nothing else matters. No, my physical condition, where I'm living, how much I'm making, that doesn't matter. That doesn't matter right now. What matters is if you got the rock in your life. Amen. Come on, in the name of Jesus, that doesn't matter. That don't matter. Make no provision for the flesh and the lust thereof. Provision, a provision is something you hold back. Come on, you might be strong today. You can handle it today. But you don't get rid of that provision. It's there again. It'll get you. Because the treasure. What's the devil after? He's after your treasure. Amen? Amen? In the name of Jesus. Boy, I, 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 the Spirit of God walked into this house. I'm at, amen. Amen. I'm, God's challenging you. Well, I got problems. You ain't got problems until you got the big problem. That's called disobedience to God. You think you got problems now? Disobedience to God is a problem. You can, it's forever a problem. Uh, if I if if God would help me with my problem, God would help you, but you got to take care of your problem first. Come on, in Jesus' name. Come on, I, I'm, I'm digging. I'm digging. I'm going after it because I feel it. I feel it in the Holy Ghost. I'm trying to help you. I'm not trying to. I'm trying to. I'm busting up clouds right now. I hope I offend you. I hope I offend you. I hope I'm offending you right now. If you get rid of that junk in your life, come on. I I, I want to offend you. Come on, I, you, you got to be saved. Amen. Praise God. You can't keep go, doing what you're doing. Amen. Living for God, falling out. Living for God, falling out. You know exactly why you're falling out. Amen. I mean, you fast. You do whatever it took. You know, you do it. Come on, what do we do to it, people get second jobs so they could have a boat or they could have this or they could have, they do all kinds of things for something in this world. Would you do it for Jesus? 
Come on, would you do it for Jesus? Would you do it to get a foundation? Would you do it to dig down? You know, when I first got in church, I, I, I couldn't pay to get a job. But I had enough money I saved back. I had to quit the job I was working because I was working too many hours to be able to live for God. But then I couldn't get a job. I said, well, I'm going to study during this time because I had enough money to hold me for a while. So I did. I just studied. I studied. I dug deep. I kept digging. I kept digging. I kept digging. I went, I, I, one God, I went from Genesis to Revelation. Anything that said God, I looked at God in every angle possible who God was. Every angle kept going, kept going, kept going, kept going, kept going, all the way to Revelation. I, even, I didn't even know Greek and Hebrew, but I studied the Greek and Hebrew trying to figure out everything about this one God, one God, one God. Dug it deep, dug it deep, dug it deep, dug it deep, dug it deep. Finally, because I was always having, uh, people would always put me in debates. You know, you got to talk to this theologian. you got to talk. And I'm like, I'd be talking to them, and they'd go, you know, this is, a, uh, this is what the Bible says and so forth so on. I'd go, God, I don't understand. Amen. I knew not to ask my, my, the pastor because the pastor had said, basically said, you got the Holy Ghost, deal with it. Amen. So I would, uh, so I, I wouldn't ask him questions. I just ask God. God would tell me, and I go from I just dug it, dug it, dug it, dug it down, and um, and I'd say, okay, God, I want to know you. I read your book. I studied it. I studied the Greek. I studied the Hebrew. I studied it all. I looked at it. You're the greatest treasure of all. You're one God. It's beyond a shadow of a doubt. I look from one end to the other. You're one God. There's no question about who you are. Amen? There's no question who he is. I seen it. That's it. But I said, okay, God, there's a lot of people that don't believe this. They're good people. They're faithful people. They're, they're more faithful than some of our people. And God, they don't believe this. They love you. They'd give their life for you. But they don't believe this one God message. I said, God, does it matter to you? I'm going to go to the church and pray. I'm going to pray. And whatever you tell me to do, I will do. I went to the church. I'm digging down deep. I'm going to the rock. I'm digging deep. I'm going. It starts at 8 o'clock that evening. I'm praying. I keep praying. I pray hours. I'm praying. I just keep praying. I keep praying. Uh, at 9 o'clock, 8.30, or 9.30, and 10, I'm going backwards. I went all the way around 24 hours. No, just joking. <laughs> and, I just, and I just kept going. <laughs> Amen. And I get to about midnight. By this time, the Spirit of God is so happy. I am just overwhelmed. It is so heavy in that room. I'm all by myself. It is so heavy. I'm, I mean, I can't even hardly raise my head because I'm just, because it's glorious in the room, so strong. I'm just, whew, whoa, this is insane. And I go, okay, God, what are you, how are you going to show me? I, I've already ser searched your scripture from head to toe. I don't, and all, all, without bidding, all of a sudden, out of my mouth, these words came out. I am Alpha. I am Omega. I am the beginning. I am the ending. I am the everlasting. I am the almighty. He went on and on. And he just, I am Jesus. And he said that all of a sudden. It went from my head to my heart. I said, I will die for this. I will not compromise it. If that's how you feel, that's how I feel. If that's how you are, that's how I am. Amen. And I will. 
Oh, yes, and that foundation has been challenged before because there's been times that people would come around and say, listen, if you just let up a little bit, it really doesn't matter. It don't matter how you're baptized. It don't matter how many gods you believe. It, and I say, oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no, no, no. I, and you just need compromise. You can have a bigger. No, no, I'm not interested. As I went down deep, I don't care if two people believe it, and that's all that believe it. I'm going to preach it. I'm going to keep preaching. It, and that's all that want to believe it. That's what's going to believe it. Amen. Praise God. Come on, let's stand. Come on, let's stand and let's give them praise. Digging deep. Treasure. 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 He's the greatest treasure. Praise God. In the name of Jesus. And you think your trial is a bad problem. And you think that God doesn't love you. Let me tell you something. Your trial is only proving that your foundation is sure. Whatever trial you're going through today is irrelevant to your foundation. That your love for God and that you got, you've dug and you bought. And he didn't sell. And you still got it. And you'll still have it. And you'll live it. And you'll walk it. And you'll believe it. And you'll obey it for the rest of your life. Until Jesus Christ comes. And his greatest treasure. And you got it. And it's secured. And nobody will take it from you. And it'll be forever. And it'll be forever. Come on, it'll be forever. And every trial. And every struggle. And every misunderstanding. And everything you ever went through will be worth it for the treasure in Jesus Christ that you did it forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Shut that cup up, Koshi. Ila makati asho makri asha ilakotai. Ila makushi lakonde ekataish. He am a koshi ayashokoi. I, your God, stand in your midst. I, as your treasure, but I, as God, also seek a treasure. I'm seeking treasures tonight, seeking it today. I'm seeking a look, I search for it. It's people. It's you. Will you be my treasure? Come on, let's reach. Come on, let's invest. That's it. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. 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 Hallelujah. 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 I just, just want, some, I, I feel like that some of you need to find a place to pray for a little bit before we just move on. You don't have to if you don't want to. But I think some of, you, some of you need to settle something. The altar's open. And you can stay as long as you want. But I think you some, some of us need to settle some stuff. In Jesus' name. Out in the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus.